Coming up on Arirang News, South Korean President Moon Jae-in calls on lawmakers to pass the government's budget for next year so spending can help boost the economy. Also in his speech to Parliament, he pledges an agenda of fairness in politics, the economy and education. Another defeat for the British Prime Minister's Brexit plan, with the Speaker refusing to allow a second vote on it. Lawmakers will debate another way forward on Tuesday as the deadline looms. And South Korean Prime Minister Lee nak is in Japan, where he attended the enthronement of the country's new emperor, Naruhito. He's due to sit down with Prime Minister Abe later this week in a meeting that will be closely watched. It's 4 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thanks for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting. Comments from President Trump seem to suggest there might be progress happening with North Korea behind the scenes on denuclearization. Hong Yu has this report. U.S. President Donald Trump says there is some very interesting information on in North Korea and speculated there could be a major rebuild at a certain point. These were Trump's first comments on North Korea since the breakdown of the working-level talks with the North in Stockholm. During a cabinet meeting on Monday local time, President Trump said that something is going to be happening with North Korea. Washington and Pyongyang had seemingly been deadlocked in their denuclearization negotiations. His working-level talks did not resume in the two weeks anticipated by the U.S. after their breakdown earlier this month. Even though Trump did not elaborate on what is going on, what kind of information he has, and what the major rebuild means, it seems that there is communication between Washington and Pyongyang behind the scenes. At the meeting, President Trump put forward his policy towards North Korea as his achievement. He said that if it wasn't for him, the U.S. could have been in a big war with North Korea, adding that former President Barack Obama had told him his biggest problem was not knowing how to solve the North Korea problem. According to Trump, Obama had tried to call Kim 11 times during his presidency, but those calls were all rejected, while Trump's calls were answered. Hong Yu, Arirang News. Today, Japan's Emperor Naruhito has officially proclaimed his enthronement. South Korea's Prime Minister Lee nak was there. He has a special connection to the enthronement ceremony, having covered one as a reporter decades ago. Lee kyung reports. South Korea's Prime Minister Lee nak arrived in Japan at around 8 a.m. on Tuesday to attend Emperor Naruhito's enthronement amid the ongoing tensions between Seoul and Tokyo. Before his departure for the three-day trip, he took to Facebook and said he will celebrate the opening of the Leiwa era and send condolences to the people who are affected by the latest typhoon. His official schedule starts at 1 p.m. when he will attend the enthronement ceremony at the Imperial Palace in Tokyo, which will be followed by a banquet dinner. Also in his agenda is improving Seoul-Tokyo relations. Wednesday will be all about boosting cultural and civilian exchanges, where he will meet young Japanese people and South Koreans living in the country. But much attention will be focused on Thursday, as he will sit down with Japanese Prime Minister Shinjo Abe. He has said he aims to call for Japan to engage in dialogue to resolve the souring ties between the two countries. He will also meet other politicians and business leaders. Amid the continuing diplomatic fallout stemming from Japan's export curves and South Korea's termination of its military intel sharing pact with Tokyo, there is a lot of interest in the outcome of the E. Abe meeting. If the Prime Minister's Japan trip proves successful, there could be the possibility of a summit between South Korean President Moon Jae-in and Abe, most likely on the sidelines of the upcoming ASEAN 3 summit in Thailand or the APEC summit in Chile. Young Eun, Arirang News. Now, Emperor Naruhito's reign actually began in May when his father, Emperor Akihito, abdicated. In his speech today, as he was enthroned, the new emperor promised to fulfill his role according to Japan's constitution. But the constitution is something his prime minister, Shinzo Abe, has long sought to change. Our Om Ji-young has more. Before some 2,000 foreign dignitaries around the world, including the UK's Prince Charles and Japanese officials, the 59-year-old emperor's ascension was formalized at the Imperial Palace, accompanied on the throne by Empress Masako. Dressed in a dark orange robe, worn only by emperors on special occasions, he took his seat on the so-called chrysanthemum throne to cheers from his courtiers and guests. 
In his speech, he said that he'll always wish for welfare of his country and world peace, that he'll act according to Japan's constitution and will fulfill his duties as a symbol of the country. The emperor's remarks could be contrasted with those of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, who is pushing to amend Japan's constitution, which was drafted by the U.S. after World War II. He has long said the constitution should state clearly the role of the self-defense forces, which are a de facto military, despite the constitution's ban on Japan having such a force. At the ceremony, Abe delivered a congratulatory speech on behalf of the nation and then shouted banzai, which in Japanese means long live the emperor. Om Ji-young, Arirang News. South Korean President Moon Jae-in today gave a speech in Parliament on next year's budget. He called on lawmakers to pass and spend it in a proactive way to help the South Korean economy overcome several challenges, including the region's trade conflicts. And he called on the U.S. and North Korea to resume their nuclear talks. Shin Se-min reports. President Moon Jae-in called on all sides of the political aisle to work on passing the government's 440 billion U.S. dollar budget for next year, a 9.3 percent increase on year. Addressing the parliament, the president said his nation's trade-dependent economy is facing a critical moment amid expanding trade protectionism. <laughs> As for the backdrop of the active fiscal policy, the president touted the nation's sound fiscal management. Urging the parliament to unite its energy, the president said his administration will use the remainder of its term to create an innovative, embracing and fair nation where all people can prosper. South Korea will also increase defense spending by $58 billion, or 7 percent, next year, with the president stressing that a strong defense is crucial in self-determination. The president, who has long championed relations with North Korea, kept his hope for a breakthrough in the nuclear talks. Referring to what many consider a deadlock in the denuclearization process, with both the North and the U.S. not making any visible actions for weeks now, the president said the relevant parties are facing the last critical hurdle. <laughs> He added that South Korea and the relevant parties of the nuclear talks must do all they can for peace through dialogue, perhaps sending a message to leaders Kim and Trump to resume the nuclear talks. Calling on North Korea to respond, the president said a bright future for the regime is only possible on the basis of a peace economy that's driven by inter-Korean economic projects. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Also in his budget speech, President Moon reaffirmed his determination to establish a fair society. That requires major changes in the prosecution's investigative practices as well as in the education system. Our Paki Jun has more. Fairness, the most frequently spoken word in President Moon Jae-in's budget speech Tuesday at the National Assembly. President Moon said the people are demanding the eradication of unfairness and unjust privileges in all corners of society. That begins, he said, with reform of the prosecution. He promised to enact a reform plan that better respects human rights by the end of the month. But Parliament must also do its part by passing related bills, one regarding the establishment of a special unit that investigates corruption among high-ranking officials. But according to President Moon, fairness needs to be established in other areas as well, especially education.
In his first public address on the subject, President Moon promised to expand the proportion of regular admissions for college entrants to create a more impartial education system. Regular admissions focus more on academic grades rather than extracurricular activities, thereby reducing the influence of powerful parents. He was likely taking into account the controversy that surfaced when former Justice Minister Cho Kuk's daughter was found to have received preferential treatment getting into college. This principle will also be applied to the employment sector. Public organizations will be strictly inspected and blind hiring actively used to prevent discrimination among applicants. President Moon says employment procedures will be continuously reformed until no room is left for corruption. Park Hee-jun, Irang News. South Korea's rival political parties have responded to President Moon's speech. Divided as usual, it's going to be a tough month as they start deliberations on the budget. Our National Assembly correspondent Kim Min-ji has the details. The ruling Democratic Party welcomed the president's budget speech, saying the 2020 spending plan will breathe life into the economy and improve people's livelihoods. It said the budget has been allocated appropriately to address security, welfare and innovation. The party also vowed legislative efforts in order to maximize the impact of the budget. Data shows that the job market is improving and the tasks that lie ahead include maintaining and strengthening growth and creating better jobs. This is something rival parties need to work together on. The main opposition Liberty Korea party criticized the speech, saying it was full of self-praise and claimed it only proves the administration is blind to the dire economic and security situation facing the nation. It said the expansionary budget is only a short-term remedy and that the government needs to overhaul its policies if it wants to revive the economy. On reforming the prosecution, the party said the president should leave it to the rival parties to reach a deal and refrain from pressuring the assembly. It was a speech that reaffirmed the stubbornness of the administration and was probably full of despair for the people. The government says the budget is for innovation, inclusive growth and peace, but it's just full of unfairness and old orders. Rival parties will start deliberations over the budget plan and have until December 2nd to approve it. The ruling party is expected to put in full efforts to secure the budget as it is to support President Moon through his third year in office. But the main opposition has vowed to closely scrutinize the bill to make sure taxpayers' money is not wasted, especially in the portions allocated for job creation and inter-Korean projects, claiming that the government is trying to win over voters ahead of next year's general elections. Eyes will be on whether the bill is passed by the December deadline, but what's for sure is that a fierce tug-of-war will soon be underway, with rival parties already at odds over a set of reform bills. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. It's time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon, and for that I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, global strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, thank you as always for coming on. Thank you for having me today. Well, on the U.S.-China trade war, now we have the Chinese Vice Premier Liu He quoted by the media as saying that substantial progress has been made towards a phased deal. Of course, President Trump also saying the talks are going well. Uh, what did they say and how have the markets uh, responded? Yes, as you said, markets are responding quite nicely. Uh, if you look at the U.S. market, uh, it has rebounded after pre decimal Friday, uh, rising by about 0.8 percent for NASDAQ. 0.9 percent for Nasdaq and 0.7 percent for S&Ps. Uh, basically, the Chinese government is saying that they are in a good progress. And also, U.S. President Donald Trump said that the efforts to end the U.S. trade war with China are going well, um, and, and everything seems to be in order. Um, basically, what uh, Trump is saying is the Chinese government wants to have this deal. Uh, because the supply chain is going down the tubes. That's exactly what he said. Uh, so clearly he's saying that he's in the right, shoe, uh, right situations uh, to get this deal done. Uh, also, the U.S. Trade uh, Representative uh, uh, Robert uh, Lighthizer uh, told reporters that the, uh, basically they're trying to aim it to finalize a deal on the first phase of the deal uh, by the time of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation meetings uh, in Chile, uh, which is expected on November 16th and 17th. So um, within next about less than a month or so, uh, they're planning to uh, go ahead and have that deal done. 
Yeah, um, and on the issue of Brexit there on the other side of the world, uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson so far unable to get his deal through Parliament, uh, but chances uh, have increased that they'll avoid a, a no-deal scenario. Uh, they're crashing out on, 30, on the 31st of October. That's looking less likely. So how are investors dealing with this scenario? Well, it seems that um, they're dealing you know, with this quite reasonably okay. Uh, as you said, um, I mean, Boris Johnson is trying to urge the MPs to back his Brexit deals uh, as he launches a final bid to get the UK to leave the EU by end of the month. Um, and um, basically, he has that withdrawal agreement bill, which was published on Monday. Uh, but still, there's doubts about whether this can be actually passed. Um, there could be a quite considerable level of the uh, uh, three days timetable is, 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 is needed. Uh, and we're not sure exactly whether that can be passed. And I, I heard that the, uh, the break. Uh, the UK have asked the EU that it gives them uh, three months uh, leeways for additional three months uh, for for the deals to get done. Um, now, the key concern is is that if the no deal Brexit actually happens, that is quite negative news for the UK economy uh, and the property market as well as the financial sector will take us uh, some hit, uh, which will cause uh, some un uncertainties within the European market. As you already know, the European economy is quite weak in terms of the growth rate as itself. Uh, and if the UK problems um, add to it, then we could have actually uh, a zero growth rate going forward, which will be quite a bit of a concern in regards to the re possible recession going into the future. Well, meanwhile, today we see the Korean currency trading at around 1170 against the dollar, the strongest it's been in a few months. Uh, what's driving that, perhaps connected to the uh, talk about a U.S.-China trade deal we mentioned? Or where do you see it going from here? Right. I mean, if you look at the uh, U.S., and uh, uh, basically the stance in regards to the currency, uh, they like to see the uh, U.S. dollar to weaken a bit. Uh, and we are seeing that some happening. Uh, it reached almost the $100 uh, index. Now it's down to about 97 level, uh, which is about 3% uh, depreciation, which is exactly what's happening to the Korean currency uh, one. Uh, it hit a peak of 1223, now at 1170. So it appreciated about a 4% or so. Um, I mean, we are looking at the Chinese uh, renminbi also. It hit the 7.2 uh, yuan to dollar. Now it's down to about 7.05. So uh, the appreciation uh, of the currency for both uh, renminbi as well as Korean one is actually happening. It's just the extent of the renminbi, uh, the one appreciation is actually a little bit stronger than most of the other emerging market. Uh, we are seeing in general uh, that's happening because the Korean government is trying to, you know, boost the economy by lowering interest rate, as well as trying to come up with the budget. So all that means that Korea can achieve 2% growth rate, which is similar to the U.S. growth rate. So therefore, we think that the currency rate should be able to stabilize at current rate. Well, we'll keep a close eye on that for sure. All right, Mr. Yu, that's where we'll have to leave it today. Thanks for sharing Thanks. your insights. Thank you very much. As just mentioned, another twist in the never-ending Brexit saga as the Speaker of the House of Commons has refused to hold another vote on British Prime Minister Boris Johnson's Brexit deal. But MPs are going to debate Tuesday on another way forward. Kim Dami has the details. In the latest Brexit twist, UK Parliamentary Speaker John Burko said on Monday there will be no second vote on Prime Minister Johnson's Brexit deal because they will be basically asking the same question to Parliament twice. In summary, today's motion is in substance the same as Saturday's motion, and the House has decided the matter. Today's circumstances are in substance the same as Saturday's circumstances. My ruling is therefore that the motion will not be debated today as it would be repetitive and disorderly to do so. Burko added it will break long-standing conventions for members of parliament to debate and vote on the deal agreed in Brussels last week. Instead, the speaker noted that it would pursue the route of getting the legislation required for Britain's departure from the EU through Parliament first, ruling out having a straight yes or no vote on the agreement.
The government expressed deep regret that the speaker yet again denied a chance to deliver on the will of the British people, but signaled that it would proceed to introduce the necessary legislation. The UK is due to leave the EU in 10 days. With the UK government presenting the law that would implement the Brexit deal to the Commons, the parliamentary process will begin on Tuesday local time. Kim Dami, Arirang News. At a cabinet meeting this morning, South Korea's government ministries announced plans to reduce the country's greenhouse gas emissions by almost a third. They plan to accomplish that through the use of an emissions trading scheme, electric and hydrogen cars and more. Our Kim Hye-sung has the details. South Korea has unveiled its 2030 target of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 32 percent from business-as-usual levels in 2017. The Ministry of Environment said the goal is to cut emissions to 536 million tons by 2030. It also outlined a series of measures to address climate change and comply with the Paris Agreement, which aims to limit the global temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrialized levels by the end of the century. That includes a transition to a low-carbon society by reducing greenhouse gas emissions used in building facilities and transportation. It will also use a carbon emissions trading system to strengthen corporate responsibility in cutting greenhouse gases and come up with an evaluation system to monitor progress. South Korea's Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy also said it will expand the use of electric cars and hydrogen-powered cars to help reduce greenhouse gas emissions in transportation. The government will install 310 hydrogen car fueling stations by 2022 and increase that to 1,200 by 2040. It set a goal of providing 850,000 hydrogen-powered cars by 2030. By that date, drivers will be able to reach charging stations within 30 minutes, which will be shortened to 15 minutes by 2040. Kim Hye-sung, Arirang News. This weekend, there'll be a chance to experience what Korea was like in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. This Friday and Saturday at the Stonewall Path outside Toksugung Palace in Seoul, it's Jongdong Culture Night. For visitors, the city's prepared exhibitions, performances and hands-on activities. Also, 26 nearby culture and history attractions will be open at night, including Toksugung Palace and the Jongdong Theater. And that brings us to the end of this newscast. Thank you for watching. More live news coming your way at 7 p.m. Korea time. Emerge.